But apart from this, I think everything so far is very easy to understand. Now, I will do the main, the basic skeleton of our program. First thing we want to do is um, when we go the Java-like way to solve the problem, we want to declare a variable which we would probably call the sum, and there we would uh, add all of the uh, numbers that we find that fit uh, the question of the problem, and in the end um, output it. So let's first de declare this variable in Scala. When you declare a variable, you start with the keyword var. Sorry, var. Uh, and then comes a declaration similar to the syntax that we used above uh, for the parameters. We call it sum, and then comes the type, it's int, and we can already assign a value. Actually, we have to assign a value before we use it, that's the same as in Java. We start with a zero, and uh, then we will do something, and in the end we will print out sum. I leave open that something that we do with it for now. Now, one thing that you might notice is that int is written with a capital I. I guess you could write it with a small i in Scala, but that's deprecated. You will get a warning because um, Scala has more operations in the int type with a capital I than Java. In Scala, you can call certain methods even on primitive variables. However, in the compiled Java bytecode, this will be an int variable just as if you had done it with Java. There is no actual overhead, it's just, um, you might call it syntactic sugar that you get from the Scala int type. I will show you some examples of this um, as part of a solution of this problem, but I will start with the way that a Java programmer would think. Again, you note that there are no semicolons at the end of the lines, and um, one thing that you might find strange when you come from the Java world is that println is here simply used um, as if it were visible. In Java, you would have to write something like, I will show you system.out.println. You can write this in Scala too, no problem. However, um, Scala has as part of its standard library uh, an object which is called pre-dev. You don't have to know that object, but um, everything that is declared inside pre-dev is already um, the predefined um, yeah, import, you might say, for every class and every Scala program you write. println, with its several variations, is part of pre-dev. So you can simply call it like that. It's as if it were um, always present static import in Java, similar to that. So let's go on with our solution. What we want to do now is we want to make a loop, a for loop, and iterate over all numbers from 1 until 1000 exclusively, check something, and if the check is OK, add the value of the number to sum. So let's start with the loop. Like in Java, you declare a loop with for. Um, however, the syntax is, sim is different. You cannot, um, like in Java, now declare a, a loop variable and uh, say that it's uh, increased in every loop, um, like you would, for example, um, in Java, you would say for int i equals uh, 1 um, as long as i is smaller than 1000 plus plus i. You can't do this in Scala. In Scala, the for statement has a different syntax and um, <coughs> Sorry, you will find out that it's much more powerful than the one from Java. I will be using only a very basic for statement here. Um, we will call our iteration variable n. Again, we don't have to provide a type because the compiler will infer the type from, from the rest that we will write right now. Um, an iteration is um, denoted by this inverted arrow, which is part of the Scala syntax, I believe it's a keyword, uh, and now we must write something which can be iterated. So we need an object uh, which can be iterated and uh, when iterated returns integers, namely from 1 until 1000. In Scala this is called a stream. A stream 
is something different from a list, although it also enumerates items. The difference is that those items are not stored in memory, they are created on demand. Every time you ask a stream for its next element, uh, it, it creates this next element by some method that it has. So we need a stream of numbers from 1 to 1000 exclusively. And um, there is a very easy way to get this. We take the starting number, 1, and unlike Java, as I mentioned, you can call methods in even primitive types in Scala. And there are some predefined methods uh, for integers. One of them is called until. And you pass it another number, namely 1000. So we're calling uh, this method now. And by the way, I believe in the generated bytecode, you might suspect that it first robs the integer number 1 in some kind of wrapper object, which is called which int in Scala, and then calls the method there. But I believe that's not what's actually happening. I believe it's, it's more like a static method call that the Scala compiler generates. So you don't need to be afraid of an um, uh, overhead object being created here. Yeah. So now we have n. n is iterated over the stream that we supply by saying 1 until 1000. Now this is a special case for the Scala syntax, namely this stream here. It is one object in which one method is called with one parameter. When this is the case, you can leave out all the syntactic decoration. I mean, um, I mean the period character and the brackets around the parameter. You can only do this in this constellation when in an object one method is called with one parameter. Then you can leave out the brackets and the period. When there are more parameters or when there is no parameter at all, you must provide the period character and the brackets. And the reason behind this is that in this way you can invent your own operators in Scala. Um, so until we we're using the until word here much like an operator and this is called the operator syntax. So, we're now inside our for loop. What do we want to do? First, we got to check if n is a multiple of 3 or 5. And this is done very much like we would do it in Java. n division rest 3 is 0, or n division, division rest 5 is 0. And if that's the case, we want to increase the sum by n. So now, I'm compiling this program because the solution should already work. And if the compiler doesn't complain, no, it doesn't complain. Yeah, I've done everything right. Now let's start the thing. So I will say run. There we go. And the solution is correct. So we've done nothing wrong here. I will close the run window. Oh, by the way, um, I pop it up again. Um, the window with that node popped up is um, the Scala run window, which shows simply the output of the program. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So I close it again. And yeah, when we look at this program from a Scala perspective, there's a lot to make easier here. Uh, one of the things that's um, very simple is um, we can put the if statement inside the for loop. This is something that you can't do in Java, but in Scala you can give a condition under which um, each execution of the loop shall be executed. So here we can write if... Uh, by the way, you can use a semicolon here to separate uh, several statements inside a for loop. Uh, for example, I might nest another loop here by saying, for example, um, sorry, m goes from 0 to n doesn't make sense for this solution to the program um, and uh, this would mean that um, we have basically f in Java terms we have two for loops here now one that goes from 1 until 1000 and one that goes from 0 to n and they are nested in Scala there's no need to, to nest them you can put them both in, in one for statement and a, a nested for loop will be generated for you 
Um, by the way, the method to is an alternative to until. Uh, to is inclusive for the last um, parameter and um, until is ex exclusive. So the loop for n won't go up to 1000, it will st stop at 999. 2 would go all the way to 1000. I will remove this now and um, another thing that you can write here in the for loop is if. If n model your 3 equals 0 or n rest 5 equals 0 and th so we have no need for this if statement anymore. Now one thing is there are no brackets around the parameter of the if statement, the condition anymore. You need the, them in normal cases in Scala, just as you do in Java. However, uh, when the for is inside, uh, sorry, when the if is inside a for loop, you don't need them because it's not uh, it's unambiguous for the compiler. Yeah, so I can also remove this line break here. The program has become a little shorter. Um, and by the way, just one comment regarding the if. This is very useful if you want to use um, the feature like, for example, um, which I showed you before, um, 0 to n. If we had any reason to do this, which we don't have for this problem, but for other loops you might have, you might find to find a reason to do this, um, then the if before it um, becomes very useful because then you don't have to break it up into several for loops which are nested. You can just write it down as one for loop. So I will make this away again, delete it, there we go. Yeah, so um, that's okay. However, um, this is the imperative way of solving the problem. You're giving instructions that are being processed and you're having a variable that is constantly changing its value. Sum is always going up. Um, and uh, there is another way to solve it in a more functional way. Scala is a programming language that has a very good support for functional programming. Uh, for this purpose, I will show you how to convert this code into functional code, and um, you can decide in the end if you find it better or not, or um, if you can solve some of the other problems that you have when you're programming better with a functional programming style. In Scala, you can mix both. There are several languages which are only functional, for example, Haskell. Um, in Scala, you have the opportunity to use the advantages of functional programming and imperative programming. <coughs> I saw one thing which I forgot to mention. Let's go to the sum declaration. Um, it is declared as type int. However, the Scala compiler is pretty smart. We can leave out the type declaration like this. In this case, the <coughs> I'm sorry, the compiler will try to infer the type. It will look at the zero that we are providing as a value for sum and it will um, know that it's an integer, so it will infer that sum has the type of integer. This type inference is uh, very, very useful, uh, as you will see later on. So, when we are going to uh, make this program in a functional style, we won't be having any variables that change the values. Uh, and we're telling, um, yeah, basically, I will, show, uh, I will show you what we're doing. I, I will delete this for loop for now. Uh, and I will also delete, um, I'll delete everything here. Ah, come on, let's start a new 